Hello everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. I am having a great day because I've done something that I've wanted to do for a long time. I've hooked one of these cheapo Gotex up to an Apple II. And so let me show you how I did it. Now you may think that that's not all that complicated, but as far as I know, it's never actually been done before other than one video that a guy posted online, and we'll get back to him in a minute. Um, the floppy standard that an Apple used, uh, famously designed by Wozniak, is completely different than the Shugart standard that, uh, that these Gotex and that pretty much all other floppy drives use, and so it required some doing. And so the guy who invented the HXC firmware, which is an optional firmware that you can flash on these things uh, did a lot of work. I stumbled across a video and he had a whole mess of wires coming out the back of a GoTech and special firmware and special software to adapt things and it looked like a mess but it worked and so that kind of gave me some hope that maybe I could do something a little bit cleaner and I did that with the help of this video sponsor PCBWay. Now I am not a PCB design expert. In fact this is the very first PCB that I created basically 100% by myself. And in fact, I did it without even having the help of the internet because I was in Antarctica when I created this thing. And so I was down there and I had watched some videos that I brought. I decided I'm gonna to try to take the uh, pinout that Jean Francois did on his website and I'm gonna to try to create an actual adapter that would be a little bit neater. And so I walked on the path that he forged and went in KiCad and, and designed this little PCB to be an adapter. But to be honest, I can't even take full credit for this layout because there was a guy who came before me, a Tandy guy uh, named DJOS, also known as Cybernetic Systems. And he had designed this Tandy 1000 HX adapter that did something similar to attach a GoTech to a Tandy. And so he gave me the idea of trying to uh, put the power connector right here so that this thing could actually just come right on the thing and go like this and be kind of a sweet little adapter. But as I said, I was in Antarctica and so I had to take a guess that this would fit. And in the event that it didn't, I made it so that you could cut this part of the PCB off and actually just put a terminal strip here. But we didn't need it because it worked the first way. And that is one of the awesome things about the sponsor of this video, PCB Way. Uh, I was able to take some free software and just go for it and know that these boards were only gonna cost me me five dollars and if it didn't work i could just pop up a revision and do it again and in fact i was so positive that this thing wouldn't work that i actually designed a second board uh called the 20 pin ribbon breakout and so the idea was in the event that it didn't work and i had to bodge something together i made this crazy board that i could basically do anything i could ever want to do with one of these little 20 pin connectors so thanks to pcb way for sponsoring this video and making it so easy to do this stuff and in in fact, if you're interested in getting your own GoTech up and running, I've got this board as a shared project on PCBWay.com, which I'll link to in the description, and you can just click a button and order yourself five or ten of them for five bucks. So I've got some footage of me soldering this thing together, but at the bottom here you can see we've got a 20 pin connector, two by 10, as well as uh, two extra pins over here that need to go to the GoTech uh, serial lines, RX and TX. Then on the other side, we've got a four pin connector, which you'll see that I offset just a little bit. You don't actually have to do that, but I did offset it just a little bit to make it fit a little bit more snug. And then we have a female 34 pin two by 17 connector here. Uh, as I said, we don't need the Berg connector because it fit the first time. Uh, now on the GoTech itself, you don't have to uh, fill in all these pins. In fact, you can get away with just filling in the two. I'll show you which two to fill in, but um, you could also go ahead and solder headers in all nine of those pins down there. And that may help for some future firmware updates that you might wanna do. Uh, so you'll see me doing that over here in the corner. This is the first one that I hastily soldered. Um, when you're done, you'll have the 20 pin on this side, which you can connect your ribbon for your Apple II to. Uh, like I said, you don't need this connector. We've got two wires here. I've got the black on the RX and the white on the TX. These are for the serial connection on the GoTech itself. On the other side, you've got the slightly offset, slightly crooked um, offset connector here for the power and the floppy connector here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it this way with the uh, 34 pin connector at the bottom 
and we're gonna just line it up as best we can and push it on. Now there's plenty of room on this to, you know, you don't need to offset that that much, but I did there. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and as you can see here, we've got two pins connected for the serial and I'm gonna put the black wire to the right or to the left and I'm gonna put the white wire on the other one and that does it now if you wanted to if you're going to keep this on there permanently you could do a shorter wire on this side of the board um this is my first one so i just did a standard dupont wire but that is about all it takes for testing i decided to hook this thing up to the apple 2c because it's just kind of the easiest to get it all in the shot and i had it sitting right here so that worked out pretty well um so it is tabbed you want to make sure that you've got the when you're looking at the back of the GoTech, the red line should be over here. Uh, you want to make sure you have these right. If these accidentally get flipped around, the only thing that'll happen is your tracks won't increment on the front. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, you're not going to do any kind of permanent damage. And then when it's correct, the uh, on the Apple IIc, the um, red line will be over here to the left. Before I go any further, there are a couple of other people I want to thank. Um, I know it feels like the Academy Awards, but... Uh, Gadget Reboot and Simple Electronics, two awesome YouTubers from Canada, uh, both helped me tremendously in just, you know, basic keycad stuff and looking over my designs and just giving me some tips and things like that. Um, and finally, the Apple II Enthusiasts Facebook group uh, gave me a lot of encouragement and some direction and stuff like that. So again, thank you everybody who helped make this happen. Um, you're going to put a thumb drive in there with some images. I'll give you the ProDOS image to make it easy to test. Um, we're going to hit some capture over here. So we're going to go ahead and turn this thing on and see what happens. Um, most of the time, the computer can actually boot up before it'll find the disk. Uh, so what you want to do is let it um, turn on and then go ahead and select the disk that you want to boot. Click it. We're going to use Dig Dug. And uh, if the computer had already booted and you didn't catch it, you're going to control open apple reset and you'll know that it's working if you see this track counter on the left uh start incrementing if it's not working most likely thing is that your uh t and r your tx and rx are backwards on the floppy drive but you'll see that it is actually loading the disc it'll take a while one of the things that's a little different is you're used to hearing the sounds uh on an old apple and you don't have the sounds here so you just kind of have to pay attention to when this thing stops flickering around that's kind of when your thing is fully loaded um so you may see stuff on the screen that you're not seeing you know that you can't actually do anything yet because the disc isn't fully loaded but uh once it calms down that goes away you should be able to do stuff like hit any key to start and uh my capture went out but anyway now it goes back so press k or j for joystick now one of the things about the apple i'm not an apple guy so i don't really know a lot about this but for things like that sometimes you actually have to hit shift k and uh you know to do that to actually get to it if you just hit the regular k it won't do anything and you'll think your keyboard isn't working but uh so i'm just gonna hit some keys here left right up down these are the worst arrow keys i've seen in a while we're gonna have the space bar for that and then you'll see we actually have Dig Dug running off of the Gotex. So, hey, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank you all for supporting the channel. I will have this thing up on PCBWay where you can uh, use the shared project. I'll keep it on just PCBWay for a little while. They sponsored the video. It's an easy way to order it. Eventually, I'll just release the Gerber files and you can order from wherever you want. But for now, if you don't mind going to PCBWay, uh, they're an awesome company, cheap easy to work with stuff like that so i really appreciate them and uh yeah check out the hxc facebook page for support on converting the discs and all that other stuff so thanks for watching and have a great day